Hello, this is John from Clocky Pairs Merseyside again. Uh, I picked this clock up uh, yesterday. It's, it's actually something I'm, it's for myself really. Uh, and it's made by a gentleman called um, James Corson of Liverpool. The hands are actually in the way. I can't open the door at the second because the, the bottom hinges. Uh, let me just try it. I want to break it. Okay, you can, you can just see now James Corson of Liverpool. Um, obviously painted uh, white dial. Um, it's got a moon roller at the top. Now, one of the reasons I bought this clock Obviously, as you can tell by my accent, I'm from Liverpool uh, and anything Liverpool, especially in the clock uh, making uh, situation, I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, it's pr a pretty nice clock, it's probably dated around about 1790, I would think. Um, pretty tall, full size clock, probably nearly eight feet tall. Um, nice heavy construction mahogany case but i'm not sure whether this case is actually with this um movement i somehow get a feeling because of the fitting of it that it isn't um pretty telltale signs when there's sort of if you look at those gaps around the edges i'm sort of feeling um it's it's not it's not the, the uh, actual case for the clock itself um, it's an eight day um, grandfather clock. The case is nice either way. It's a, it's a, it's a really heavy mahogany uh, case, I think. I think that bottom panel has been replaced at some time or it's been added. It might not have had a panel on that, but I think it's been ha added because it's a different um, sort of wood, if you like. Also, if you you can tell it's quite an early clock. If you open the door, the door has got you know some thickness to it. Um, that's a sign of a, a pretty early clock. Apart from that, it's driven by two weights and obviously regulated by a pendulum. Um, but yeah, it's a you know it's it, the, the real interest for me is is the Liverpool maker, but also. I'm going to take the, the, the hood off and I'm going to show you the escapements on this clock. Uh, now it's centre seconds, which is a little bit, you know, you don't get many of them with centre seconds, but this has got centre seconds on it. Um, but, you know, that that's one thing. But when I show you the escapement, you'll see how they've actually achieved this uh, pretty simply, really. Uh, but the, the movement's quite interesting. I've not seen, I've not seen one like it before. Um, but yeah, it's 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 well worth a, a look. But yeah, pretty pretty nice nice clock. You've got your glass panels up top there, and it appears to not be in too bad condition, really. But you know, we will restore that, and it may I, I may I may sell it if I get something. Well, I will sell it actually, uh, and then I'll, I'll look for for other stuff. I'm quite interested in tidal clocks and. There is there is a few few about, and I'm interested in them. But yeah, that's a, a pretty heavy Liverpool clock. I think dated from about 1790. Um, James Corson was from the Toxteth area of Liverpool, and he, I think, is Park Lane. I think is 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 his, his workshops would have been. Um, yeah, he, so he was a, a you know a, a clockmaker round at that time but that's as much as i know about something now so i'm just gonna have a pause for five minutes and then i'm gonna take the hood off and i'm gonna uh, have a look at the movements okay okay right i'm back right this is the movements on this uh, james corson uh, eight day grandfather clock as you can see the escape wheel is mounted on the back of the movements and obviously probably dead sensor, that's what's given us our sensor seconds. Um, also, it looks to be um, deadbeat rather than 
uh, you, you know, a, an anchor type escapement. Uh, so, you know, where your hand actually just sort of gives a little jip backwards as, as it moves forward, it's just a little, you know, thing backwards, so it looks to be deadbeat, um, which is another, you know, not 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 totally a, a rare situation, but a bit more unusual. It's a it's an eight day movement, as you can see. Uh, it's not in too bad condition. It's obviously been serviced at some point in its life. I mean, it could have been hundred years ago, who knows? But you know, um, it's a pretty bog standard movement. Apart from that, uh, mounted onto your front dial with a with a with a dial plate. Um, there's actually no markings on the back of the dial. What you've got to appreciate about a, a lot of these uh, grandfather clocks is, I mean, I know there's always talk of marriages and, and it's always fantastic to actually, you know, be 100% certain that a clock is is a, of one, i.e. case, dial, uh, everything is all, it all goes together as one. But it's not as easy to find because as you as you've got to appreciate these clocks have been around for a couple of hundred years or so and so it's going to be quite difficult to be a hundred percent certain unless obviously you've got the total history of the clock but you know you're never gonna um you're never gonna always be able to a hundred percent guarantee that um the other thing about it as well is that it really depends on the type of marriage it is. I mean, I know it's 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 most definitely a more worthwhile if you can get something that you know you know it's it's a hundred percent. But you know, there's bad marriages and good marriages, just like in life. I mean, you know, sometimes we see clocks and you know it's it has been, it's been thrown together. It's probably never mind two clocks. It's probably about four clocks. I mean, and they've just been thrown together and and they're not very good at all. I mean, the 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 not the horrible. Um, there's gaps everywhere. Um, the case totally doesn't go with the maker at all. Um, a lot of things like that. I mean, there's other telltale signs on this particular clock that the case is not with the with the actual uh, movement. Is you know wedges, bits of wedges here. Um, that could have been that this these shoulders if you like they've rotted away and you know they've had to be replaced you know bits and pieces have had to be replaced that that may be one one idea but then you go to the other side might have been cut down there is if you look in this corner you can see you know it's definitely been reduced for some reason the only other thing I'd say is that, you know, to me, the, the dial is slightly lower down than where it should be. So to me, that sort of indicates, you know, obviously there's, there's a problem and there is signs of, of worm, if you like, uh, there or there has been. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling that the case is not the right case, but you know that that's that's really it. Um, go round to the front. A few markings, gut line, a couple of pieces of short gut line because it's certainly not winding on. Um, okay, if we look at the case, the case is quite a nice, solidly built case. Also, I've noticed at the bottom of the case the the timber's been replaced there at the back. Um, which is definitely not right. So obviously, to me, if we look at the bottom of the clock there, there has been a lot of work there. I mean, that, that front board certainly isn't right. Um, we're not going to do anything about it. We're, we're just going to maybe polish it up, but we're not going to do anything about it because, you know, the clock doesn't warrant that really from, from a selling point of view if I was, if I was going to sell the clock. But often with the the, the, the the bottoms of clocks, grandfather clocks, the scare part of it, should we say, and the legs, they're often missing or uh, being taken off at some point because often these clocks were in a maybe a kitchen area um, and, and the bottoms have, have, have been getting consistently wet and that's obviously caused 
dry rot it is actually the opposite way around dry rot wet rot it's, it's the opposite of each other what causes it um so often the, the the legs have been cut off or they've been put on bum feet or they've been you know we see all manner of um situations with the bottoms of, of, of the clock i mean often customers come to us and say uh, you know, are, are them feet original? Is this, you know, it's very difficult to say what is it is original as as I've been discussing a few minutes ago because you know we we don't know the full history of the clock and it, it's a bit silly to say oh yeah we're hundred percent we never will we'll say well you know as far as we can see and I'll always point out to a, to anybody what what the situation is and I've, I've I've got no worries about that whatsoever. Um, you know, to, to be honest about what, what I think about the clock. And as I say, my opinion of this clock is is that I don't believe it's a Liverpool door. Uh, it might be Lancashire. The shape's Lancashire. But I don't think, to me, it may be... I'd have to see other clocks by uh, James Corson to, to see... Uh, to, to, you know, if, if I've seen many of his clocks with that, I'd say to myself, yeah, maybe he must have been buying the the um, the cases into from somewhere else who was building them that way in Lancashire. Quite unlikely. Normally, they would use a a, a, a cabinet maker in the area, and so you know everything. They, they had control over a lot of things, so they'd know the way it was. But yeah, that's that's a James Corson eight day. Uh, tall mahogany i think grandfather clock um as i say not not in in, in reasonably decent condition until we get down to where the skating area is and then it's um it starts uh showing up it's 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 issues uh unfortunately where i bought it from i didn't actually notice this it was quite dark so you know should the, the lesson there is to take a torch isn't it but yeah as I say, one of the reasons attracted me, I think I got blindsided slightly looking at the escapements and thinking, oh, that's a bit unusual. I'll, uh, I fancy that type of thing, you know, how your heart rules your head, as I say. We're starting to get a few bits and pieces in now, as you can see. George Monk. Um, that dial on that's not right, as we've said. Well, this is John from Clock Repairs, Merseyside. Just another uh, video. Don't know whether it'll be of interest. I just thought I'd uh, point this out. Okay, have a great day. And if you like my videos, please subscribe and leave me a like. I mean, it does encourage me to, to do as many as I possibly can with my time constraints. Anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs, Merseyside. Have a great day. Thank you.